This video is for the homies, the train at homies, people that train from home. There will be a personal bias in this video. I do not really like training at home. I just don't like working out in the same place I masturbate. It's a personal preference thing. Same reason why I don't wank in the kitchen. Different places have got different uses to me and I don't like muddling them up. And I think it's great that some people can exercise and train in their front room. And I just can't go from one minute getting an awkward semi-erect penis to broke back mountain to the next minute having to try and build muscle. Broke back mountain. I remember distinctively thinking I haven't been this disappointed with the semi since the last Rugby World Cup. But the truth is not everyone has the luxury of their own fucking gym and they will need to train at home. More often than not because of these little fucking annoying thing that we call children. Now, before we get started, it's important you understand that I do not know your goals. However, irrespective of your goals, whether training for a marathon, trying to get fatter, build muscle, whatever, I would strongly recommend you get at least two workouts of resistance training a week. Now, when it comes to giving people exercise, that isn't the hard part. You can access any YouTube workout or go online, get a free workout, get it for free. That's not the issue most people face. The issue is progressing that person from that workout forward. As the body adapts to the stimulus we give it, whether at home or at the gym, over time, things will get easier. So it's our job to make those things harder so that we're always challenging our body. Some of the ways we could do that. We could add more reps to an exercise. Finish the work set and go, that wasn't that hard. Add more reps. We can also impact the tempo. We can then implement a slower lowering phase. We could also implement a pause. And as you'll notice, most personal trainers prefer using weights because we have more options at our disposal and making things harder over time. Another option we have is to add more weight. However, when it comes to training at home, especially with no equipment, the real only tool you have is to increase the duration of the exercise you're doing. So let me demonstrate with one of the most stupid fucking exercises ever to exist, the burpee. Let's say you were to do this exercise until you're a nine out of 10 fatigued. Over time, as you got fitter and more adapted to that burpee, your only way to progress is to do more burpees. Now, if you're someone like me that would rather wank off another bloke in public than do a burpee, the prospect of getting fitter and more adapted to something I hate and the only progression is to do more of it doesn't really appeal to me that much. And increasing the duration of an exercise isn't always a safe bet because then some people dial back their intensity. They know they're working for a longer period of time, so they don't work as hard. Now, like I said, I have personal biases. Remember, I don't like to masturbate in the same place I train. But here are some of the exercises that I detest when it comes to home training. I hate burpees. I hate mountain climbers. I hate high knees. Pretty much any exercise where your feet comes off the floor. So where do we start with home training? Good fucking question. Come with me. As I spoke about before, if we look at the objective of training at home, we want to systematically train different body parts. Not only is that going to improve our strength, reduce our chances of injury, we also need to look at different body parts as being protective of the joints they look after. Your thigh muscles and your hamstring muscles are going to look after your knee. Doing exercises that promote hip extension, like working your glutes, are going to look after your hip joint. Presses and pulls are going to look after your shoulder joints, elbow joints, not to mention, let's call it upper back health. And to do so much of this, we don't need that much equipment. So as per usual, let's start with the lower body first. If I was going to assume that you're brand new to training, some people just don't squat that well. So the first exercise I'll give you is a rear foot elevated split squat. You get to stand in front of your sofa, pick your foot back. Then from here, we're just going to try and lower the body as low as we can. Whether that's leaning forward or staying upright, you stay more upright like this. Or you can lean more forward like this. Whatever feels best for you. Weak leg first. Once you've done enough reps, say 10, Wow, James, that was really fucking difficult. We'll swap and we'll come to the perceived stronger leg. We'll try and do the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So then you sat down and you're thinking, hmm, I kind of need a bit of a break. No better time than to work the opposing muscles. From here, we can start to look at hip thrusts. Or even better yet, because that'd be quite easy for the majority of you. I bring one foot into the center, bring one knee into your chest, and you could do single leg. One, two, and there you could pretty effectively train the front and back of your legs. Maybe four sets ago. I think a really non-invasive way of getting yourself into push movements is to use the arm of a sofa. If I was training you in the gym, we'd just be using the plyometric box. Remember, the higher my hands are, the less of my weight is going through my body. From here. Now, you might get to 10 and think that wasn't very difficult. Now, we don't really have the luxury of making the sofa lower. So instead, what can we do? First point it called would probably to be increase the reps. So maybe see how many you can do, even if it's 20 or 30. And if that is too easy, we'll just go to the floor. Now there are two body parts that become incredibly difficult to train when it comes to training from home. 
pull movement and isolation movements. So if you wanted to target your biceps or your triceps, it's very difficult to do without equipment. So the one first point of call when it comes to home training equipment, I would say is a suspension trainer. These are commonly known as TRX, but it's a suspension trainer. It's just the most common brand is TRX. Just so happens to be one of the companies that kind of dominate the market. These are really fucking expensive for what they are. You get much cheaper alternatives on Amazon. Why didn't you get a cheaper alternative? I did 5,000 hours of one-to-one -one personal training before I moved to Australia face-to-face. -face. And probably 90% of the sessions, I would implement a suspension trainer. And now I know a lot of you don't have the luxury of a fucking half rack to clip it into. So most of these will come with something that you just wedge in your door. As long as you have a door, you should have somewhere to wedge it in. What I do like about the TRX, is I now have row movements that I can use. And as I said before, there are also isolation exercises such as bicep curls, tricep extensions, unicep stretching and opening up the chest. There's actually some pretty cool core variations as well, including tucks, including pikes. So having a suspension trainer, fuck me, you could tie that one a tree in your garden. And when it comes to using the TRX and making things harder and progressing, you can move your feet in relation to the anchor point to determine how much body weight is gonna be going through your arms or your legs, which means progressive overload on something like a suspension trainer it means you just need to move your feet when it's too easy or move your back if they're too hard. So the suspension trainer is like the fucking fitness gimmick that never really was a gimmick. That'd be one of the first things and parts of equipment I'd recommend. Things like resistance bands definitely play their part. They could benefit you in pull movements, such as making chin-ups easier. They can help you in push movements, such as making press-ups more difficult. They're also quite handy in isolation work, whether it be like in your posterior delts with a banded pull apart or doing a tricep extension. But these aren't so much for novices, more so for people that know what they're doing. When we look at kettlebells and dumbbells, they are pretty expensive for what they are. And even then I would just use them to make squats harder, to make RDLs harder, to make hip thrusts harder. And I think investing in something like a home bench, like that over my shoulder, is a pretty good investment. And if you have the family around for a roast dinner at Christmas and you haven't got enough seats, you can always pull out that bench and have the emergency chairs, as Peter Kay calls it. Now I know a lot of you watching this are gonna be quite shocked because that was quite a sensible video. But to me, this is quite an important topic because often I make videos where I'm taking the piss out of things and saying, oh, hit training is shit, spinning is cycling on a fucking stationary bike with the brakes on. But I truly honestly believe that resistance training can benefit every single person's life. And you shouldn't write yourself off just because you can't get a gym membership or having kids doesn't permit you to spend hours each day lifting weights. There are some people out there where jumping around their front room like a fucking asshole is amazing for them and they love it, that's great. But there's a big cohort of people, including myself, that just can't bring themselves to do that every day for the next 20 years. And because in the world of resistance training, whether at home or at the gym, we have so many tools at our disposal to make stuff harder, you don't need to give more time to it. When I first started lifting weights, about 45 minutes to an hour was a perfect amount of time to train. I've now been lifting weights 15 years, although might not look like it. And 45 minutes to 60 minutes is about the perfect amount that I need to train because I have so many tools to make things harder without having to give more time. Now, the most important point to all of this is probably this. There are gonna be days that you can't be fucked to train. There are gonna be days that you don't wanna do it. There are gonna be days that you can barely get out of bed, let alone get yourself ready for a session. And when you choose resistance training, you can lower the weights, you can lower the reps, you can dial back the intensity and still benefit yourself. I struggle to see a world where you can turn up and do relentless amounts of burpees or jumping jacks when you're run down, when you're tired, when you're sleep deprived, when your children are doing your head in and enjoy it. It's so much easier to dial back weights, call it a deload, but there is no easy way to do a burpee when you're tired or when you're run down or when work's got on your back. And the biggest caveat to all of this is this. I know for a fact that when I'm 50, I will still be lifting weights, probably for different reasons that I do now. And I'll probably be lifting very different amounts of weights in a very different style, but I will still be enjoying it and doing it for the benefits that it gives me. I just don't see doing burpees, jumping jacks, jumping around my front room like an asshole, or getting on a stationary bike and turning the brakes on as I'm trying to pedal and calling it a hill climb. I just don't see a world where I find that fun. You can say that I'm bashing other things, but this is just personal preference. I don't like melons, but I'm not there trying to say that melons are bad. I'm saying I don't fucking like them. That's my prerogative. You can agree, you can disagree. Let me know what you think in the comments. That's a pretty definitive guide to home training. And if you're interested in online coaching, training at home or the gym, there's a link in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.